You're watching Kenosha Community Media. Well, I'll pay Jason for me. Either he wants to say something or eat something, one of the two. Take the opportunity to put our musical uh, interests. Acting, in. dancing, and now singing a Grammy award. Laura Kaplan. Movies and, uh, and particularly night shift and, and, and gum home. Really? Never knew that. Okay, uh, welcome to Just Talking. We have a great show for you today because we are here uh, starting off at the Kenosha Kingfish uh, Stadium. And I'm with your name? Zach Palisard. And Zach, uh, for those who don't know about the Kenosha Kingfish, what is it? Uh, we are a minor league baseball team that plays a collegiate short, short series from the end of May until mid-August. So are these players from the, uh, outside the area? Or? Yeah, so our players are from all over the country. Um, they play at schools um, all over. We have players from Texas, Florida. Um, guys from our league are from uh, California. We also have guys in our league from over in Taiwan and all over the uh, world. What a great stadium here, too. Uh, what does the Simmons Field have to, have to offer? Uh, I think the biggest offering that Simmons Field has is a uh, great atmosphere. Um, our fans really come out and support us quite a bit. Um, we sold out 33 out of 36 games last year, um, so the atmosphere is always great. And we have something for everyone um, in the whole family. So we have the uh, Aurora Kids Zone, um, where the young kids can go and play. We also have our Miller Lite uh, Fishbowl, where you can have people go out and have a good time, as well as then we have our regular stadium seating that's good for everyone. Also, in between the games, I think there's some entertainment. Too, huh? Yeah, in between all of our innings, we put on like a little skit on the field, whether it's a, a games where kids come out and play or it's races. We have everything from a mini bike jump where one of our dancing alvi jumps over the rest of our dancing alvi on a 50cc mini dirt bike um, to a dancing grounds crew to toilet bowl races. We built toilet seats up on carts and we race them around the field. Um, and then grown man dancing in tutu. So we got it all here. Okay, Zach, uh, and uh, what's really neat, uh, if those who haven't been here in a while, there's been a lot of improvements here made. I Maybe you can touch on some of them. Yeah, so we did add some stadium seating um, in the past couple of years. We added 11 more of our four top tables, as you can see here, um, that are um, you have a personal weight server for each of your tables. Um, you don't have to get up unless you have to go to the bathroom, so it's a great spot to, see, to sit at our bathroom. We also added on to our Miller Lite Fishbowl. We added nine more tables to that area, which is the all-you-can-drink and all-you-can-eat area. Um, we also changed up some of our packages. So we have our Founders Club package. Uh, it's $27, all-you-can-eat, ballpark food through the fifth inning, and then it gets you three tabs that are good for ice cream, kids games, or beer, which is a nice added bonus for people. Um, so we changed that up, and then we added some new menu items. Um, these are kind of all of our four top table areas. Um, all of our seats have been repurposed, all from Camden Yards. Um, so all of our seats have a back with two armrests. Um, it's very nice to have um, great seats at our ballpark. You're right on top of the game the whole time you're here, so it's really terrific to be here. Okay, uh, Zach, and here was a very popular place during the game is the food. And let's hear about what you have to offer here. So this is our main uh, Kentucky stand. This is the Festival Foods Grill. Um, we have a lot of different items here. We have everything from your regular ballpark foods to uh, slow roasted pulled pork. We smoke for eight hours a game, as well as our brisket. We smoke for eight hours prior to every game. Um, we also have Nacho Business, which is a all you can or a nacho and taco stand. Um, it's Nachos made there with everything from pulled pork to beef. Um, we also have walking tacos as well as uh, walking nachos is what we say. Um, we also have our uh, chef's uh, shack over there that has uh, our ice cream products in it, at it. Um, and this is where our main food gets uh, made as well as then we have all of our festival food brats um, and all of our specials get put out from here. Well, Zach, thanks so much for showing us around. And you know, what's kind of neat after the game or during the game, they also have a great gift shop as well. Yes, American Outfitters Team Store. We have a lot of great uh, items for you to purchase for your family or yourself. A lot of great T-shirts, hats, sweaters, hoodies, you name it, we got it. Yeah, so actually right behind us is our Platinum Systems ticket office. This right here is our box windows where you can purchase tickets to any games. Um, walk right up, you can purchase them day of a game, or you can call in at 262-653-0900 um, to purchase some tickets um, prior to your game. And is there like events that go on throughout the season? Like special events? Yeah, so we host special events. So we have our Beer and Curd Fest that takes place in uh, 
late August or mid August, um, as well as we just had our Lombardi walk here, um, and then other events like that. So yeah, we put on a qu quite a few events here. We also have our um, home run derby down at the harbor on August 2nd. It's a Wednesday, August 2nd. Um, we're putting on a home run derby, same as last year um, at the harbor. We'll put up a floating fence and have our all the players uh, knock home runs into the harbor. It's a cool event. Uh, we'll have a live band as well as fireworks there. All right. Well, this is a great event, great area to come in to watch a great uh, ball game. Uh, address, phone number, and website. 7817 Sheridan Road, uh, Kenosha, Wisconsin is our address. Phone number is 262-653-0900 and website is, Kenosha, is kingfishbaseball.com. All right. Come on out to the Kenosha Kingfish. Zach, thanks so much for telling us. Yep. Thank you. Okay, welcome back, and here in the studio we have Meredith Jamisco from the Kenosha Visitors Area Convention Visitors Bureau. Let's give a big round of applause for her. Coming out. <laughs> Meredith, it's so good to have you here again. Now, there's so much going on in Kenosha, but for those who don't know what the Kenosha Area Convention Visitors Bureau is, what is it? Well, we are a resource for people that are visiting the Kenosha area from out of town. We have a website, a visitor's guide to visitor information centers, and we're all over social media, and we share the many great attractions, restaurants, hotels, events that our community has. And we are also a resource for, re for residents that live here, and we let you know how you can be a tourist in your own town. Well, that's the way to go. And there's so much, I mean, if anything, that. Uh, every time during the summer there's always something going on weekend weekday um, but we usually go over some of the the areas that are going on this summer so let's start off with music uh, let's uh, hear what, what type of music attractions do we have going on we actually have two brand new music events this summer one is tribute island which is toward the end of july july 22nd that weekend there saturday and sunday it's going to be on simmons island many different stages and they're all going to be tribute bands and oh. there may actually be some cast members from survivor there as well so kind of a whole island survivor theme going on and then in august the peace tree at music festival is going to be going on at the band shell and the shop owner from peace tree originals will be putting that on it's about peace love and music that weekend we always like the, uh, which is very popular, the Peanut Butter and Jam uh, Festival. That's right, Do, yes. Is that going on this summer? Yes, July 13th, Peanut Butter and Jam opens up, and it will be every Thursday through August. And, of course, they have two helpings every day, 11.30 and 6 p.m., a variety of music throughout the season. And two days before that each week, you can enjoy it at the Shell, at the Band Shell, another free concert series. And then we also have the Kenosha Pops music at the band shell on Wednesday nights. Uh, beginning of the season will be affected a little bit because the band shell is getting a new roof. They're going to be at Library Park actually for one or two weeks. But that's another free concert series, Twilight Jazz, we have going on at Kemper Center on select dates during the summer. And also Lincoln Park Live at uh, Lincoln Park a few nights in the summer as well. So lots of different free music series you can enjoy and then of course we have our our very famous ones famous festivals like Harbor Park Jazz Festival in August always and we have Country Thunder a favorite one of mine always in July Keith Urban will be here and Jason Aldean so is the contract set up that Keith Urban comes to perform here only if you get backstage passes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I wish. <laughs> okay. But that's going to be a huge, huge attraction uh, here. And, and Country yeah. Thunder always sells out. It's very, and, very popular. Yeah, it's a nationally known festival. So yeah. it's and where is that cool. located? It's out in Twin Lakes. Twin Lakes. Okay, ranch. great. Mm -hmm. And then also, I believe uh, uh, Hawthorne Hollow has a music festival. Yes, they do. They have three different weekends, uh, three different Friday nights for a small fee. You can go a beautiful setting right along the Pike River there. It's the Pike River Concert Series variety of music. Um, one thing that's uh, the 
the festivals that I really do like is the food festivals. And we, we can't, I will not uh, uh, continue unless there's a Taste of Wisconsin. Will there be a Taste of Wisconsin? Definitely, summer? Taste of Wisconsin. Last weekend in July, they already have their food vendors listed on their website as well, oh. tasteofwi.com. So that has food, that has music, that has family-friendly activities. Definitely a big, big weekend on the lakefront. Um, let's see what else do we got. Oh yeah, well, I didn't go there, but I'm going to go this year. Uh, it was called Border War. Yes. Let's hear it. Border War Beer Fest that yeah. will be August 5th, and it's kind of a competition between Illinois brewers and Wisconsin brewers, and that's down in Harbor Park, and they have a 5K event, even part of it, music competition, all sorts of fun things going on there. Be back for a second year now. And uh, we have to mention our good friend Lou Molitor from the Kenosha Chamber of Commerce. I think he has an event called Grill Games. Yes, Grill Games. Huge event. It brings like 30 to 60 different barbecue teams here to Kenosha. There's all sorts of different aspects. Local restaurants also compete. And even anyone in the community that wants to gather a team, your organization, your business, you can compete in a community competition. So not only great food, but also they have music and different activities. So that's always toward the end of August. All right. And lastly, I did check off on my list because I know you're coming. I did go to Cheese Palooza. Oh, that is right. a really neat, fun, especially at kind of at the end of the summer. Let's hear about Cheese Palooza. Yeah, Cheese Palooza kind of closes out the summer season, Labor Day weekend. If people think of summer as Memorial Day to Labor Day, then you get that event. It's when the car show's going on downtown that Saturday of Labor Day weekend, and then also Cheese Palooza's on Sunday. So they have multiple stages of music, a lot of things having to do with all things cheese since we're Wisconsin, and yeah, it's very good event. Yeah, so go on out to those food beverage and the music events, but there's also some great family fun uh, events throughout the summer too. Let's uh, highlight Yes, some. I just thought actually what is incredible is how many movie nights there are now mm. in the summertime. We have every Friday night at Petrifying Springs Park at their new beer garden. They're having family friendly movies. And then also a couple nights in the summer, Simmons Field is going to be having free movies. And then also there's going to be some nights at both Lincoln Park and then some at Nash School with free movies. So definitely all family-friendly movies, all free, good time to go out. And nothing like seeing a movie on your lawn chair or on a blanket at dusk, great time. And we also have so many other family events throughout the summer to enjoy. Yeah, because I did go out to the Nash one where they were playing Tomorrowland last year and okay, yeah. just filled with people and it was a, a great time. They have a big mm -hmm. blow up screen and, and yeah. movies and it, especially when you get a nice night like that. Um, okay, I think there's going to be a parade this year. Uh, yes. And let's confirm July that. 2nd the parade will be okay. on Sunday, 1 o'clock from uptown to downtown. Slightly new route with the construction going on. It's gonna go down Sheridan Road once it gets there to 54th Street. So that will be the last part of the parade. But then that same day after the parade, Celebrate America will begin at the lakefront that goes through July 4th. There's a carnival, there's multiple stages of music. There, the third and fourth will really be the big days for they usually have pups, to, um, jumping into swimming pools, they have water ski shows, just all sorts of family friendly entertainment with the fireworks show on the night of the 4th. We are already getting phone calls about the fireworks and um, they are on the 4th. <laughs> excellent, that's going to be a night. So um, let's go with, uh, oh, we got our good friends, uh, the Public Museum, the Pike River Rendezvous. Yes, that happens the first weekend in August always on Simmons Island, travel back in time with the fur traders and they have cannons going off and just all sorts of different interactive events where you can talk with the people. They act like it's back in the day. They show you the crafts they made, the foods they ate, and it's just a very nice event. I get, and then we also have the Kenosha County Fair as well. Too. Yes, Kenosha County Fair opens August 16th. They'll have fireworks that night. Of course, Wilmot Raceway will have races during the fair, and they always have something new and improved to enjoy at the fair. And, of course, the animals being raised in the area, the midway, the food, it's always a great time out at the fair. Um, so we to cover music, food, um, family fun, and let's talk about any other activities that, that we may yeah. want to highlight. Of course, we should mention the Kenosha Kingfish. Their oh. season is underway. And of course, it's the best of college players hoping to catch the attention of major league um, scouts that are out there. So that's always fun at the ballpark. Saturday nights, they have fireworks, lots of things to do there. Um, we have Museum Crawl on July 14th. That's an 
interactive after hours event at three of our museums. There's food, there's music. It kind of shows that, you know, museums aren't a stuffy old place to go to. You can have a lot of fun at them. They have a lot of cool displays and kind of gets people thinking about museums in another way, maybe that wouldn't normally visit. And that gets them excited about it. Um, of course, we have the tall ship, Red Witch, back again. It was here a lot of weekends last summer, but this year we're its official home port now. So you can go out on an 80-minute sailing excursion on Lake Michigan. There's going to be set times through about early October to do that a couple days a week, or you can rent it out to do a private charter if you have a, a you know, a, I don't know what you would have, like a bridal shower out on the boat or a corporate outing, any sort of thing, you can have the boat to yourself. Mm. And then uh, there's, uh, well, we can't forget the History Center because yes. this History Center is connected with the Southport Lighthouse. Can you take tours of this? Yes, you can climb the lighthouse four days a week if you are eight years old or older. The 72 steps up to the top. You get an incredible view into about three counties. And, of course, on a very clear day, not only from the lighthouse, but many places along the lakefront, you can even see the skyscrapers in Chicago. And then when that's open, the Maritime Museum is as well. So that's all part of the Southport Light Station Museum. And the History Center has a huge event they're putting on this summer. It's, they put it on once every three years, and it's the Kenosha Homecoming Car Show, also known as the AMC Car Show. A lot of Kenosha-made cars will be coming back. Our hotel rooms are literally booked for that. It's going to be a huge weekend, same time as Taste of Wisconsin, so you can go to the lakefront and really take in a couple of these events. Taste of Wisconsin, I'm there. <laughs> and the Downtown Car Show, they just pack them in. It gets bigger yeah. every year, and it, it's it's a, a great time out there, too. Um, okay, I think that, well, we do uh, want to highlight what um, uh, Meredith brought down here. But before that, to get more information about there, I know you have those first Fridays at the I-94 Visitor Center. Yes, so our I-94 Visitor Information Center is a great place to visit any time of the year to get ideas of where to travel throughout Wisconsin. There's literature from many destinations throughout the state. And the first Friday of every month, we hold an open house from noon until three. And we have about oh, anywhere from five to 10 businesses, attractions, restaurants come out, have food samples, literature on display. And not only is it a great place for local residents to go and get a glimpse of what we offer here, but it's, it's a nice surprise for travelers coming to town and they get a nice welcome to Wisconsin with that open house. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, head on out to that uh, uh, visitor center on I-94 because you can also get a lot of brochures out there, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, Meredith brought uh, two here. Let's hear about it. We've got Fun 101. Yes, that is 101 things to see and do for $10 and under. Many are free. That's our spring summer edition. So a lot of these events and concert series are listed and in parks and just all sorts of different ideas it gets you. And families love that. It shows just how affordable we are in Kenosha. And it's a great, great eye-catching piece for people. And the other one? And that is our Kenosha Area Visitor's Guide. It's available at our I-94 Center as well as our downtown office at 812 56th Street. And also at all, basically every place mentioned in that guide, Mars Cheese Castle, Jelly Belly, all those places carry our guide. And you can get everything online as well at visitkenosha.com. Okay. And that's uh, so the website, visitkenosha.com. Boys, I... Just time goes flying by, but in so will the summer, so you want to go out to all these events. They're a great time out there, and we thanks so much to the Kenosha uh, Visitors Convention and Kenosha Area Convention and Visitors Bureau uh, for providing this information. They, they do a great job, and we want to thank Meredith Tremisco for coming on down. Let's give a big round of applause for Meredith. And we'll be right back. As a parent, I know one of the most important times to be with your children is when they aren't feeling well. For many families, there's a place they can go to find the support they need. Ronald McDonald House Charities programs provide that supportive environment so families can be together while their children are dealing with serious illnesses. You can volunteer your time at a local Ronald McDonald House or drop your change in an RMHC canister. Today is a great day for all of us to show our support. To find out how you can get involved in your community, visit rmhc.org. Okay, it's that time of the year again, and we are here at the Safe Harbor Humane Society, and I'm with your name? Chandra Redbrick. And Chandra, you're the executive director. Correct. All right, so th those who haven't been to the Safe Harbor Humane Society, uh, what do you have to offer? 
We have uh, animals for adoption. We get cats, dogs, and small animals in. Um, and then we also provide low-cost um, spay-neuter services. Those will be starting up in July. Um, and then we also have low-cost vaccine clinics. And those happen typically the first sat or second Saturday of every month. Is that if they, someone has a cat or a dog, is that something they should do regularly? Or? Yes, once a year um, is typical. And especially this time in the spring, you want to heartworm test your dog so you can get that medication on them before the mosquitoes get out there too much. Okay. Um, you have a nice little kitten there. Uh, what, what would be the advantage of having a, a cat or a dog? Well, they're great companions. <laughs> um, they keep you warm at night and um, give you some entertainment. And um, they're just lovable creatures that are great to have in your home. And do we have a name for this one? This is Percival. He's a kitten. He's not up for adoption yet, but we are going to have several kittens in this weekend um, that will be av available for adoption. And we, it is Adopt-A-Cat Month in June. Mm. So the last week in June, we are going to have a sale of 50% off all of our cats six months and older. And do they just come in as strays or how they? Um, they can come in numerous ways. We do take owner surrenders. Um, we only take animals from the Kenosha County. Um, <clears throat> they can also come in as strays. People can find them and bring them in and drop them off. Um, or uh, police can bring them in, um, either seized or also strays in that manner. Okay. All right. Um, let's move on. Okay. okay so when uh, people enter into the lobby and come to the reception area, what, how does the adoption process work? Yeah, usually we have you come back first, go back and look at the animals, um, and then once you find somebody you're interested in, you can come up and fill out an application. Um, there is an application process. We review the application, and once you're approved, we do an interaction. Um, if you have other pets in the home, other dogs in the home, and you're looking at a dog, we'll do an interaction with you and the dog first, and then you and your other dog from home to make sure everybody gets along. Um, and then once that's all approved, we have um, an adoption contract and, and some stuff we go over with them, and they get to take their pet home. And then as far as, oh, didn't you guys also have veterinarians on staff or no? Um, currently, we're between vets, but we have a full-time vet coming on um, on June 26th, we'll be providing the low-cost spay-neuter services again. It's starting in July, so if you have a pet at home that you want um, spayed or neutered, then come on in. There's some paperwork to fill out ahead of time, and you have to make an appointment, but we'd, we'd be very happy to get you in and get that done. Uh, and then uh, also, not only in there, is there an outside area to look at the dogs too? Or Yes, um, back in the kennels, they're back there, but we also have two dog runs outside uh, where we do a lot of our interactions. Okay. Um, so we get to take the dog off leash and you get to interact with them outside. Um, and that's where we do the dog interaction with your own pet if you have another. That's the best way to do it because you don't want to get the dog and then, you know, there's some problems or whatever. At least you can try it out here. Right. Here you get to see their initial reactions. And if it's just not a good fit, then, you know, you can keep looking and find that good fit. Let's move on. Okay, a nice expansion to, if those who haven't been to Safe Harbor, there has been an expansion here. And we've got a cat roaming room. Let's hear about Yes, um, about a year and a half ago, we expanded and added two free roam cat rooms, uh, which is really great because it allows the public to come in and really interact hands-on with our cats, um, and it gives them time outside the cages and to play with each other, and, and you can really see what their personalities are like. Um, so these have been a wonderful addition, and everybody really loves them. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and then I'm also looking at these benches here, too. What are they? What are they? Yeah, so the benches are here. Um, they were donated um, by various uh, donors, and they are used a lot of times during our vaccine clinic, or if um, they're you know waiting to go in a room, they can sit here. Um, but yes, this was very generous donations. <laughs> and, and then again, you're always taking donations here. Always, we're always in need of donations. It um, takes a lot to keep this place up and running and, and staffed, and um, the animals always appreciate any donations whether it be monetary or food or equipment um, bleach paper towels things like that um, we're always in need of okay and what's also nice when you can't come in here you got a great gift shop here at the Safe Harbor Humane Society and let's hear what you have in here yes um, we have a lot of fun t-shirts that um, advertise Safe Harbor as well as some fun animal <laughs> um, t-shirts we also have 
um, dog toys and cat toys um, that are pretty inexpensive, uh, as well as um, dog bedding, cat bedding, and um, our lupine collars are wonderful. They have a lifetime guarantee. Um, so if they were to ever break, you bring them back in with your receipt and your tag, and we can send them back in and um, get a replacement. Um, we also have um, these new three-story um, cat condos. Uh, they could also be used for small animals, and they're on huge discount. <laughs> so if you're in need of a cage or a kennel, that might be something you'd want to look into. That's right, and then, and then that's what's great for dogs or cats. They just love to play with things, and this is a oh, perfect Oh, yes, place. definitely. You want to keep your dog entertained with, with fun toys, <laughs> so they focus on that and not your house. <laughs> And the best part about it is the money uh, from here goes to the Safe Harbor Committee. Yes, it all benefits the animals. All right. Well, thank you so much for showing us around here. It's just the Safe Harbor Humane Society just did an excellent job in here. But are you also in need of volunteers? Yes, we're always in need of volunteers. Um, we have people that come in on a regular basis. There's a never-ending supply of laundry that needs to be done, um, dirty food bowls that need to be washed, so dip wash, dish washing. Um, we also are looking for people to help socialize dogs and cats, um, you know, get them time out of their kennels and out in our outside dog runs. Uh, we also are asking for people who will help transport animals, like sometimes um, we we'll work with other shelters and rescues to get um, dogs and cats uh, to a new location if we're getting full or if they have uh, better services to provide the animal than what we can provide. And we need help transporting that animal from here to there. Um, that can be anywhere from you know an hour away to possibly like four hours away. So, how do they go about doing? Do they call the call here or on the website? Um, they can call here or they could, we'd, we'd prefer is if they'd stop by. Um, there's a little form that we have them fill out so that we can contact them. We do volunteer orientations um, every couple of weeks where they come in, we show them around, we talk to them about what they can do to help uh, and, and kind of what follow policies and procedures they'd have to follow. Um, and then after that, uh, they can get signed up and, and come in and you know, follow, sign in and, and do the volunteer work. Uh, and then if we could recap the upcoming events for the summer at all to, uh, for fundraisers or anything. Yeah, definitely. Yes, our big event this summer is Walk for Paws. Uh, it's at Anderson Park on August 27th. Um, it is where we do a little walk around the park at the end of the day, but during the day it's really a family festival. We have um, food trucks that come out, and we do games with the kids, and we have events for the dogs. Um, there's a raffle. It's just a fun day to come out and celebrate a, a beautiful day outside. And then if anybody want uh, more information about the um, Safe Harbor Humane Society, because I believe on the website it actually lists the dogs and cats. Yes, uh, you can visit our website or our Facebook page. Um, our website has a link to our adoptable animals, so you can see everybody that's available for adoption. It also has a link to the Walk for Paws page, so you can see more about that event and, and follow what new things are going to be there. Um, and, and it has ways to contact us, so if you're ever in need or want to come out and volunteer, we, we put our posts about what we need out there. And the address here? Um, it's 7811 60th Avenue. And the phone number? It's 262-694-4047. Okay. Great. No, all in one breath. All right. Well, yeah. we thank you so much. Uh, Safe Harbor Humane Society, once again, is a, a great organization in the community. And come on down to see the gift shop, adopt an animal, or volunteer. So thank you so much for talking to us today. Thank you.